So in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can start building a portfolio for free so you can reach out to those clients and start getting paid. These methods, or at least the first step in this video, might be easier or more difficult to actually do rather than what it sounds like, depending on how introvert or extrovert you are. Me personally, I'm a little bit of an introvert, so I've done it and I'm very sure that you can do it too. So let's break this down in five easy steps that you can follow and let's get started. Step one, knowing how to film. Now, this is of course the most crucial step in the whole process because what you're initially gonna sell is your filmmaking skills. So you need to know at least the basics of how to make video in terms of exposing with the exposure triangle, meaning understanding how ISO, shutter speed, and aperture works together in video, making sure you know that your footage is in focus. Now, these are just the basic crucial steps. We're not gonna go through how all that works in this video, but that's obviously step one. Now, what I wanted to say with this step as well is you don't have to have a fancy high-end cinema camera to go out and do this. You could essentially just use your phone especially if you have one of those new smartphones from the recent years they have really good video quality and you can get away with that they have a certain look to it that some businesses are looking for so don't shy away if you don't have a camera that you need to save up for first maybe starting with shooting with your phone can actually lead to getting enough money that you can buy your first camera if that's what you're looking to do so don't shy away from that any camera you have is good enough to start out with you're starting from one level and then you can slowly build up and save up for the next level Step two, make sure you know what industry or industries you want to shoot for. As a new filmmaker or videographer, it can be easy and tempting to just go out and shoot anything and everything to try and make money. But as much as I'm not a big fan of niching down, and that's not necessarily what I'm saying you have to do moving forward here, is when you're starting out, it's good to narrow it down to where you can start, especially because having too many options can be too overwhelming. So start with something that feels like something you can do at least for a few months where you're starting out, you're building your knowledge and your skill and your confidence in making videos for clients, and then you can slowly build up or niche out or go to a different brand niche the first thing and most important thing if you want to make money with filmmaking is that you start somewhere. What I've just done myself is try to make some videos for cafes and restaurants in the local area. And I think that's a good starting point. You don't have to start that way, but that's the example I'm going to go through in this video because that's what I've done myself. And the reason why this works well is because local businesses might need some content to help them build or engage with their customers in the area. And they might not have the biggest budget to attract or use a big agency to make commercials or short form content in the long run. So if you can find some of those that actually have a budget or that you can show it works maybe for a few weeks free then you can slowly build up and maybe start monetizing that way and there's a lot of different ways to go about it you don't have to choose this niche this is just what i think is great if you can start building a name for yourself in the local neighborhood and local area that'll make it much easier for you to actually go there face to face and talk with people now of course before you start reaching out or figuring out what niche you want to go into or what industry you want to start with make sure that you're picking somewhere where they're actually going to use video content if you need to start by convincing them that they need it without actually having any proof that it works yourself other than knowing that it's like the general thing right now. It can be difficult to convince someone that is not using video already that it's something they need. So make sure you choose something where it actually makes sense for them. And if it's cafes or restaurants or whatever else it might be, check out the Instagram and see if they're actually already posting photos, whereas videos could be a complementary to that. Or maybe they're already making some videos where you can help top up that or enhance that with what you can do. Or just take off some workload from them because they might not be the best at making videos themselves or have the time for it so that's where you could come in i would choose something that's nearby that you can go and talk to them in person and that's why we have done what we did going to cafes because we're here in auckland in new zealand and there's a lot of local cafes nearby so that's why we chose to go that route so step three is actually creating the portfolio. And this is a crucial piece to starting to make money because you need something that proves that you can actually deliver what you're saying that you can deliver. One thing is just to show up with a camera and say, hey, I can make videos, do you wanna pay? That usually doesn't work most of the time. You might get lucky, but you need a portfolio so you can showcase your skills and showcase that you're actually able to deliver something of decent to high quality that they can actually use. So to create one, here's where depending on how introvert or extrovert you are, this can be a little bit difficult. This has been my 
biggest fear to go out and do, honestly, myself. But it's something that I always preach or tell all my students if they want to start out making videos, earning money with it. This is my best idea. Now, I haven't put it that much into practice myself because I travel all around the world and I rarely stay in the same place for a longer period of time. But that's not the case right now. We're in Auckland and we need to make some money to save up for then. So we started going around to local cafes. And what I suggest you do is shoot up to five projects for free to begin with. And the way you can go about that is just to go around, knock on doors and say, hey, can I spend 10, 15 minutes shooting something for you for free? I'll send it to you later if you give me your email and it's completely for free. You can use it for whatever you want. And two things will happen from that. One is that you can use this as a portfolio for yourself. So you can use that to showcase to other businesses, not necessarily even in the same niche, but just showcasing you can deliver something of quality. You get a little bit of pressure because you're somewhere and you promise someone to deliver something, but you don't have the pressure of actually being paid yet, if that's something that you're nervous for in the beginning. And thirdly, you might actually be able to create more for these businesses because you've already proven that you can create something cool for them in a short amount of time. So go around, knock on doors, and ask if you can make a video for free. But one thing you wanna be prepared for when you're going around knocking on doors is to get a lot of no's. We went out yesterday, as I've probably mentioned a couple of times already, and I expected to get a lot of no's, but our mission was that we wouldn't stop until we had a yes. And the four first places that we went to all said no for various reasons. It would either be because they were too busy, they already had the content they needed, or the first mistake we made was that they didn't even have or use social media. So a good tip, as I said before, is to check that before you head into a place. Just look up their Instagram, see if they're actually using something. Look when they last posted something and if they have some degree of following, although you can see there's a potential that they want to use videos. If not, you probably shouldn't go in there and create something for them. While you might be able to make a portfolio if they're kind and saying yes, you might not be able to upsell them anything afterwards. So you might as well go to some businesses that you can actually start out with and potentially make some money with in the beginning. Now, we were super lucky yesterday that after those first four no's, we actually got five yeses in a row afterwards. And that varied from being the owners themselves that were there and working in the business to just some part-time workers who just said, yeah, sure, you can shoot something. And for the most part, we just waited till they were making a coffee for some guests that are already there, which usually happened pretty fast. One of them, we bought a coffee ourselves just to get that as well because there weren't that many customers. And that's a way you can either go around just investing a little bit yourself or you can just shoot like some atmosphere stuff or if the person behind the counter is kind, maybe they can make something for themselves or you can just be creative with shooting something. Now, the most important part is not that you're trying to sell anything with this video for the business. It's mostly showcasing that you can make something that looks good and that they can use. And giving them something for free is already a great value add. And you wanna make sure that they don't have to necessarily spend a lot of time with you if they don't have the time. What you wanna do when you try to build your portfolio is just to be as, in my opinion, quick and efficient as possible without being in the way. That way you can show that you can actually create something with they going about their everyday day-to-day -day tasks and you can create something cool or good at the same time. Now, if you're then progressing to the next step, we're actually gonna make something paid for them. You probably wanna put a little bit more effort into talking with them and figuring out who they are. And that's a great networking thing you can do then as well. But what we did yesterday was the main focus was to create the portfolio. So you can go about it in different ways, but I think the main goal is to create something that looks good in a short amount of time, both to put a bit of pressure on yourself and to not disturb them for too long. Now, a tip before you head into these businesses and ask if you can shoot, it's just to have all your settings set up beforehand. What I recommend you do is shooting in slow motion, just because you can then slow it down afterwards if that looks better or if it gets rid of some shake. And if you wanna use it at full speed at 60 frames, that's usually fine as well. They won't know the difference and you might know for the next time when to shoot in slow motion and when to not do it. So making sure that you have all the settings set up before so you can just get to shooting if they say yes is a huge pro in this case and make sure that you can focus on framing or capturing whatever it is that they are doing so you can help them with that instead of focusing on getting your settings right and seeming maybe a little bit unprofessional if you can get straight to shooting and deliver something of good quality to them as well they will quickly see that oh that was very effortless and very quick as well and then another tip is to not do too many projects 
If you get on a streak and you have a lot of people saying yes, it's easy to stack up a lot of projects that you then have to go back and edit. And the purpose with this third step is to go out and create something that you can show to others to get money from that. So don't create too much that's for free. We went out to get five and after we had those five, we decided to stop and then to just go back and edit it so that we could deliver it as fast as possible. And that then brings us to step four. So step four is the editing. And just like knowing how to film from the beginning is a crucial step, knowing how to edit is also great because you need to put that together into a video that they can actually use. So what I recommend is that you try to make it as easy as possible for yourself to get these videos done, especially those free portfolio videos. It's tempting to make them as perfect as they can be, but you also wanna be efficient with your time and move on to the next one. If it ends up not being your best work and you can't use it for your portfolio, I think it's better to go out and shoot free more for or some other cafes or come back and say, hey, can I shoot it again? Rather than spending too much time trying to fix something that wasn't good or spending too much time making it perfect. And some different things that you can use for that is for example, having a subscription to a stock music site. I use Track Club. It's a link if you want to try it out for two months for free and something like motion vfx where you can easily add transitions if you need that text overlays and they have a ton of different assets for both premiere and final cut and davinci resolve so i highly recommend those out as well i use them a lot but for what we created for these portfolio pieces with just simple cutting and using music over it so i would just find a song that matched their style going to instagram figuring out if they have used reels before what is their style or what is the kind of music that i could use for it I'll just try and find something that I found suiting myself to the style of the cafe that we were shooting. And then I would simply just cut it to the beat to make it simple and then have it done fast and easy. We shot for those five cafes. We spent maybe two and a half hours going around, including shooting everything and taking a few breaks in between. And then we spent two hours total, two people editing all these five reels so we can send them over to them immediately and have that portfolio locked down. And I think it's a great way to do it because in the realm of social media as well, all these pieces of content don't necessarily need to be perfect, especially if the business that you end up working with want a high quantity of them. And it's more important that it's decent and looking good and showing something about the business, telling something about the business in a quick way so you can create a lot of it rather than making every single piece perfect and ending up spending way too much time without getting paid. And here's a little compilation of what we shot yesterday, about 10, 15 minutes at each of those five places. And these are some of the shots. Okay, step five is packaging and outreach. Now that you have everything edited and you have your portfolio, it's time to reach out to some companies, both the ones that you already edited for, if you didn't already send it, or to other companies in the same industry or in the same area, depending on what you shot for your portfolio. So you can reach out to them and ask if you can create something similar for money. Now, one thing is pricing. We're not gonna go that much into that. I recommend starting at something you're comfortable at and then growing from there, increasing the prices every time. But what I recommend you do is to try and package things in before you start reaching out. So instead of just sending an email saying, hey, I've created this before, I created this for you yesterday, do you want me to come back and create some more for you so we can help grow your social media? While that might work for some that are very social media savvy, or maybe you hit them in the right timing, maybe it's perfect that they were actually looking for someone, but they didn't have time, perfect timing, they might say yes. But in the other instance, what I would find is that they don't always know what they need it for. So in this instance of cafes and restaurants, what I would suggest is to create a package of free videos that you can sell them first. The whole main purpose of these free videos that you capture is that it's something they can pin on their profile, say it's Instagram, they can pin it to the top. And the reason you wanna sell something for that is when you go to an Instagram page, the first thing of course you always see is the top. And what I see a lot of creators do is just to pin the 
most viable stuff on the top page but either putting your products up top or putting a personal story or personal stories up top of what you're actually doing. Because when new people come to your profile, they will see that as the first thing. So it's something you can do for your own profile too, but think about selling that to those businesses. So that could be, for example, one video that's a portrait of the company or the person or the owner that has it, talking about why they opened the business, what it is, uh, what they're passionate about, how their day-to-day -day life is, stuff like that. Just like a, an interview format that you can put into a short video that can go on the pinned page. That will help create a deeper connection with those people coming in, both their current customers, but also new customers coming in. They can get a sense of feeling like they know that owner and maybe build a connection even before they've actually gone to the cafe and feel like they know the people. And when they come there and see the owner, they're like, hey, I saw you on Instagram. We had to come check out the place. Already build some anticipation around that business so that's the first one I would do and secondly it could be something like the best selling product if that's some bread or a special coffee or something showcasing what that is and why it's so good if it's something bread that's baked 5 a.m. in the morning fresh every day put on the shelves or it could be coffee if it's a special roast or something that you can only find there maybe that's something they want to highlight something unique and specific about their place and then the last one could be something about the ambience or happy customers whatever you can come up with but if you can package two or three videos that might get you that first initial one and give them something that they can start using tell them how to pin it and show them that if they don't know already and then catch up with them once in a while see if they got results if they're not happy to buy something from you already and then if they're starting to see those results then you can start selling more content to them maybe or start pitching that as a concept to some other businesses and that also gets it back to if this packaging doesn't work then maybe you can go out and redo step three but now try and create this type of video that you're trying to sell for a few businesses for free and then go and put that into a portfolio and say hey i've used it as a case study this actually works this brought this in this business this in this result and now you can do the same if i create these videos for you so if that's something you're interested in blah blah, blah going about the money so those are my tips to starting out building a portfolio there's tons of ways to do it this is for me the simplest way to do it and what i do myself the same thing kind of goes for all the different industries and if it's not something local you can go reach out to try and find out ways that you can create a portfolio for free either by going asking someone if you can borrow something or if you can borrow a little bit of time or just shoot something and then send it to them afterwards for free that's a great way to go about it you're showing that you're happy to create and give some value out maybe something comes in return and otherwise you at least have a portfolio so that's what I had for you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or other suggestions that might help out people or something you disagree with, you're more than welcome to put that down in the comments below. I'm always happy to hang out with you guys there. And besides that, I'll just catch you in the next video. Until then, take care.